Okay, are you ready? Buckle up, everyone. It is the long version of the 2019-2020 winter forecast. If you want the kind of the to-the-point short version, head over to WFMJ.com, the Storm Tracker 21 app as well. You can also find the three-minute version in those places if you're more uh, into the weather. If you need a lot of detail, this is the video for you. Just a a little heads up, it is going to be a long video. This video always is long. We like to get into a lot of detail and show you some of the some of the why the forecast is what it is. So winter 2019-2020, we're going to focus on the months of December, January, and February, meteorological winter. Now, our snow forecast is basically first flake to last flake. As you know, that last flake may not occur until the middle of April some years, but especially the temperature forecast, we're really focused on, on the heart of winter, December, January and into February as well. Quick word about November, the next few weeks looking awfully cold and awfully midwinter-like. If this pattern were to continue all winter long, we'd have a pretty harsh winter. If you're not a fan of that kind of weather, thankfully I don't think this pattern will continue all winter long. All right, so a legitimate question when it comes to the seasonal outlooks and especially a winter outlook is, hey, can we do this? And the answer is yes, there is skill in these seasonal forecasts. This is not throwing darts or flipping a coin. There is scientific basis for these forecasts. Now, there is not as much skill as your standard seven-day forecast that you see me do on TV every night, but there is skill. Ironically enough, despite advances in forecasting techniques and technology, this may actually be getting a little bit harder, and the reason for that is yeah, climate change. Because the Earth and the oceans are warming so rapidly and changing the climate, uh, it makes our ability to rely on previous year's data it, it kind of reduces that ability, I think. Uh, any analog years, any any years that we look at that are, say, prior to the mid-90s or mid-80s maybe, uh, you can almost throw those years out because the Earth was so much of a different place back then. So it's making for a little bit of a challenge when it comes to these forecasts. All right, before we get to the forecast, quick review of last winter. Last winter was kind of a ho-hum winter in the grand scheme of things. Yes, we had a, a pretty sharp cold snap at the end of January, uh, that was easily the coldest weather of the season, but we did not have much snow last winter for the entire season, 45.6 at the Youngstown Warren Airport. Now, average for the airport is in the mid-60s for a season, so it was about 20 inches below average. Temperature-wise, it was about two, inch, uh, 2 degrees, I should say, above the average for the months of December, January, and February. The most typical winter month last year was January. That was a pretty close to average month, but December was mild and February was mild as well. And speaking of February... We're now on a run of four consecutive warm Februarys. We had some harsh Februarys earlier on this decade, uh, 2014, 2015 namely, but since 2016, or 2013, 2014 were harsh. 2015, 16, 17, and 18, all very warm Februarys with some snow, but not a lot of snow. The big, uh, the big story was, of course, the uh, temperatures. Also last year, the winter started slow. We did not have much snow in December. Temperatures were quite a bit warmer than average as meteorological winter kicked off. And again, I mentioned the snow at the Youngstown Warren Airport in Vienna in Trumbull County. It was about 20 inches below average. Now that's where the official records are kept. Your mileage, of course, varies throughout the region, but even in more, the more lake effect prone zones, of northern Trumbull, northern and eastern Mercer, it was still a a below average winter in the snow department. Some recent uh, winter temperatures, uh, we've had four consecutive Februarys that have been warm, we've had four consecutive winters that have been warm, 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18, and last winter, all warmer than average on the heels of two pretty harsh winters in 13, 14, and 14, 15. You know, when you look back all the way to the late 90s, we've had, let's see, eight, cooler than average winters, one very average winter in 04, 05, and then, uh, what, what is that, 13 warmer than average winters since the late 90s. So that goes along with our other climate trends for warmer temperatures and more precipitation no matter what the season is. When we look at annual snowfall, and this is a little different than seasonal snowfall. Seasonal snowfall is during a winter, a fall, winter, spring season. This would be the calendar year. Uh, graphic and there's been an upward trend in the last few decades in fact the 2010s easily the snowiest decade in recent memory even snowier than those famous winters back in the 1970s we've had a lot of snow this decade despite the relative lack of snow that we had last winter all right when we come when we when it comes time to make these seasonal forecasts what's kind of the the secret sauce what's our method here well number one on the list is analogs I touched on this towards the beginning of the video 
our reliance on these past years with similar conditions in the oceans and atmosphere, you know, it's a little bit harder than it used to be because while there are some similarities we can point to, overall, the Earth as a whole is much warmer, the oceans as a whole are much warmer than they used to be. So again, while you can point to some similarities, whether it comes to the El Nino or other factors, and you can look back at past winters, say in the 50s and 60s, and say there were some similarities in the setup, you gotta remember the background state in those winters 50, 60 years ago was much different. It was a much cooler Earth back then, so uh, you almost don't wanna rely too much on those past years when they go back into the 40s, 50s, and 60s. 70s and especially 80s on is really what we have to focus on, I think, because uh, again, we can almost throw out those those older years thanks to the change in climate. All right, for this winter, the key factor is looking like this. Now, ENSO is basically an abbreviation for the Central Pacific cycle between La Nina and El Nino. El Nino is the, the warming of the waters in a certain part of the Pacific Ocean. La Nina is the opposite. That's where it's cooler than average. And the, that particular stripe of water in the Pacific can have an influence on weather patterns uh, across North America during the uh, winter season. This year, it's kind of a neutral signal, a La Nada, if you will. Neither a, an El Nino or a La Nada, or a La Nina, I should say. That being said, I'm not going to be surprised if it's not completely neutral, if there's a very weak El Nino. Uh, that would not surprise me this winter. I don't think that this will be a big factor, though, in the, uh, in the winter season. All right, we have a pool of very warm water in the northern Pacific that I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, that's called the positive uh, phase of the Pacific Decadal Oper uh, Oscillation, PDO. Uh, another fancy meteorological abbreviation, QBO. Um, that is not dealing with the oceans, that's dealing with the very top of the atmosphere and what the winds are doing up there. That can have an influence on uh, weather patterns in the northern hemisphere during the uh, winter season. We'll talk about that in some detail. And we'll talk about what the sun is doing. Well, the sun's always there. What does it matter what the sun is doing? It's sitting there providing heat for us, right? Well, sunspots and the lack of sunspots can, it has been shown, uh, can influence uh, weather patterns across the northern hemisphere during our winter season. Here's a look at the water temperatures across uh, much of the globe. A couple of areas of note. This is our El Nino, La Nina zone through here. You don't see some bright oranges. You don't see deep blues except banked right up against South America. It's kind of a neutral signal. Here's our North Pacific warm blob. Also, the waters are pretty warm off the coast, the east coast of the U.S. and across the Gulf of Mexico as well. It's hard to find cool water across uh, much of the Northern Hemisphere. I want to back this up a little bit. One of the factors towards this year's uh, forecast and kind of a change to last year, uh, we've gotten off to a fast start when it comes to the snow cover season in Canada. There's quite a bit of snow on the ground in Canada. There wasn't this much at this time last year. Well, what does that matter? Well, air masses that come across the pole and take aim on the U.S. have to go through Canada first. And those air masses, if they're going over a deep snowpack, they can be refrigerated a little bit if the snow is fresh and it's deep. A, an already cold air mass can get even colder if it's running across a deep snowpack. And so that's something we have to keep in mind as we go into the winter season. We're already seeing evidence of that here in November. Uh, air masses coming from the North Pole across Canada are uh, certainly more intense than they were last November. Now, last November was a, a pretty cold November, but this November might even end up being colder than last year. Also, we look at Siberian snow cover uh, for a similar reason, but also it's been shown that a rapid increase in Siberian snow cover in October and early November can uh, increase the odds for blocking patterns across the northern Atlantic especially. Blocking patterns in the northern Atlantic can sometimes lead to stormier weather in the eastern U.S. I mentioned that QBO thing a moment ago. Again, this has to do with the winds on the very top of the atmosphere, up through the stratosphere, and this is mostly a belt of wind above the equator. What does that have to do with our weather here on the ground? Well, it has been shown that this uh, changes direction once every year to 14 months or so. When this is in a westerly direction, that increases the odds for a mild winter in the eastern U.S. because it keeps the polar vortex pretty strong and pretty locked up across the North Pole. When that polar vortex it weakens and stretches out, that can allow some colder air masses to come south. And when the QBO is more in the easterly phase, then that increases the odds sometimes for that uh, polar vortex to stretch out, weaken, dislodge cold out of the high latitudes and allow it to come south. This winter, 
is kind of the opposite of last winter in that the QBO is currently westerly, but it's trending towards neutral or even negative. Last year, it was strongly negative and trending towards positive. Now we're kind of positive, trending towards negative. So kind of the opposite phase that was in effect last year, right around this time. And that could have implications on the, uh, on the polar vortex and uh, what it decides to do as we go through the winter. Kind of a couple of unusual things that we look at when we're trying to piece together this puzzle for a seasonal forecast. Uh, the moisture in the soil. It was a very wet summer and early fall across the middle of the country, the upper Midwest. It was a very dry summer across parts of the Carolinas and the Southeast. It's gotten wetter lately down here, but uh, still probably running drier than average. And what does this mean? Well, sometimes ridges of high pressure like to find themselves parked over areas that have been warm and dry. The opposite is true for troughs of low pressure. They tend to want to form or meander over areas that uh, have some wet soil and it's been cooler and stormy as of late. So that's just a, it's a fairly minor factor, I think, but it's just one thing that I wanted to point out uh, on the list of things we look at when creating these forecasts. I mentioned the sun. Right now we're in the middle of what we call a solar minimum. There's very few sunspots. The sun is what we call very quiet. It's probably going to be this way for a few years. And it has been shown that a quiet sun sometimes will lead to more blocking patterns in the northern Atlantic. And again, as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, more blocking in the northern Atlantic means an increased chance for some cold and stormy weather in the eastern U.S. Not always the case, but sometimes it works out that way. All right, I mentioned those analogs earlier on. Past years with a similar setup in the oceans and in the atmosphere to the fall heading into the winter season uh, uh, for this year. Uh, my number one analog by far and away is the winter of 2004-2005. As you go down the list, the analogs get weaker and weaker, but I really like 2004-2005 for a few different reasons. Uh, similar to this year, kind of a neutral El Nino, La Nina. Uh, a few other reasons that I won't get into because this video will be a half an hour long. Uh, but uh, I really like that year as far as the best analog goes. Uh, you'll notice though, all of these years, were at least a little bit colder than average. These are some cold winters on this list. Snow is more variable. 0405 was an above average year with 81.2, but 78, 79, while it was very cold, it was not snowy. Only 36.3 inches of snow that winter. 95, 96, also a cold winter, but not particularly snowy. Uh, about 15 or 16 inches below average for that year. So here's my list of top analogs. And here is a look at the wintertime temperature forecast. Pretty high confidence that it's going to be a warmer than average winter in the Intermountain West, parts of the Deep South, and the West Coast as well. Now the blue colors are below average temperatures, and those I have centered across the Upper Midwest, the Northern Great Lakes, and into New England. Now, does this mean in, in all of these places that every day is going to be cold or every day is going to be warm? No, there's going to be fluctu fluctuations. Sometimes I'll see a snarky comment when it comes to this winter, these winter forecasts. Well, it's Ohio, it's going to be cold and it's going to snow. What else do you need to know? Well, everything's relative to average and our forecast is telling you what it's going to be when we uh, kind of show you the end result at the end of February. What were the three months like when you add it all up? And what we think is temperature wise, it's going to be pretty close to average, perhaps a little bit colder than average. We're close to that colder than average zone. I think we'll be closer to the colder than average zone than the warmer than average zone for meteorological winter. Now, you look back at those analog years and there's a lot of cold years. Why isn't my forecast colder? One of the reasons is the atmosphere just seems to want to be warm lately. This is a look at uh, monthly temperatures compared to average in 2019. We've only had one colder than average month this year and we'll probably make it two when November is said and done because again, November is looking pretty cold but a lot of warm months lately. And then 2018, there were only three colder than average months. The atmosphere wants to be warm as of late. One of the kind of uh, principles that uh, a lot of forecasters use when it comes to a winter forecast and you're in kind of a, a neutral El Nino, La Nina phase, not really a strong uh, phase of that uh, index. You look back at the most recent winters and kind of assume that this winter might be sort of similar because there's not a strong El Nino or La Nina to kind of disrupt the pattern. What I want to show you is this map, which is all of the last several winters averaged together. And what that map looks like from the winter of 2013-14 through last winter 
is warm in the west, warm in the southeast, cold up here, and we're just a little bit above average. Um, so, you know, that, that's something I'm keeping in mind when it comes to this winter's forecast, that recent winters, with a couple of exceptions, have been pretty warm, and it's been pretty warm in the last couple of years, not just the winters, but the past couple of years as well. I told you I love that 2004-2005 uh, analog. Here's a look at that winter. That winter was a pretty warm winter coast to coast. We ended up just slightly below average, actually, despite the yellows and oranges nearby. We were just a shade below average, but with the exception of New England, South Florida, and parts of Nevada, the rest of the country was either close to average or somewhat above average during that top analog winter. When you look at all my analogs and average them together, the, the map looks different. When you look at all those years that I showed you earlier that are kind of my top analogs, a lot of cold on the map. So I have to kind of strike a balance between recent history, the relatively warm look to 2004, 2005, and then some of the other factors, including the, the QBO thing, uh, solar minimum, and the fact that my other top analogs are pretty cold looking. So that's why my forecast is a little bit conservative, I think, when it comes to temperatures. If I were going, if I were ignoring recent history, I would probably have a colder forecast. But I, I hesitate to, to forecast a harsh winter at this point because the atmosphere just seems like it wants to be warm. All right, above average precipitation does seem pretty likely this winter across much of Ohio and Western PA as well. Not all of this will be snow, of course. Some of it will be cold rains and uh, sleet and freezing rain, but a fair amount of it will be snow. And speaking of snow, all right, I'll get out of the way here and show you this map. This is our snow forecast for first flake to last flake for this winter. All of these numbers, no matter where you are on the map, somewhere between 10 and 40% above average. Now, where the airport is located in Vienna, the average is in the mid-60s. We average more like the, oh, 30s in a lot of Columbiana County, a lot of Mahoning County averages in a given season, oh, probably 40 to... Uh, 55 inches just roughly we don't have a, official observing places anywhere in our area other than Youngstown Warren Airport but you know just a uh, an educated guess a lot of these places around and south of 224 average I'll oh, say 30 to to uh, to 50 or so inches worth of snow in a uh, season amounts get higher of course as you go off to the north because of lake effect that's why you see so much more snow up here of course a secondary snow belt adds to those totals in uh, parts of Trumbull and Mercer counties, and that's why amounts are always higher up there. So again, no matter where you are on the map, these uh, totals are above average and quite a bit more than last year. Another way of visualizing this year compared to last year. Last year, here's the dot for last year. This side of the ledger is drier, this side is warmer, this side's colder, and over here, in going in this direction, would be snowier. Last year, we were on the warmer end and the drier end this year closer to average temperature wise maybe a little bit below average and then uh snowier because we're below the media the, the middle here we're down here that means snowier so a different winter this year compared to last i'm not expecting a real harsh winter i'm not expecting a memorable winter necessarily but i do think it'll be different than last year that, and as far as impacts go higher energy bills than last year higher salt usage than last year and yes, just like every other winter, there's going to be the occasional school adjustments, perhaps, perhaps a few more than we had last year. All right, I'm gonna do an update on this forecast coming up in a month. We're gonna see if winter is showing its hand and make any adjustments as needed. Coming up on Thursday, December the 5th on 21 News at 6 and 11. Online as well, that video will be shorter than this one, um, but we'll do an update on the uh, winter season at that point. All right, this video is long enough. Thanks for hanging with me. Hope you enjoyed all the detail, a little behind the scenes as to what a meteorologist looks at when trying to construct a seasonal forecast. Last year's forecast, in case you're wondering, went just fine until February. We were banking on a cold and stormy February. The atmosphere decided to uh, warm up again, and that uh, kind of made last year's winter forecast not a complete bust, but it wasn't great at the end of the year. December and January, our forecast was pretty good. February, not so good. We'll hope to make it three out of three this year, all three months behaving as expected. Thank you for watching. Again, thanks for sticking with me on this long video. And again, look for an update in about a month.